James Webb Space Telescope is NASA's largest and most influential space science telescope. NASA has photos to confirm that the JWST is now fully aligned. Near-infrared camera NearCam, fine guidance sensor and near-infrared imager and slitless spectrograph FGS Nearest, mid-infrared instrument MIRI and near-infrared spectrograph NearSpec are the four major instruments on JWST. Welcome to another video of Cosmos Observer, the only destination for your space curiosities. NASA released a sequence of photographs displaying Webb's full field of view in deep space to recognize the alignment of the telescope's 18 gold mirrors, which collect light from distant and ancient galaxies. A gold coating provides infrared reflectivity and endurance to the mirror. JWST is primarily built for near-infrared astronomy, although depending on the instrument, it can also view orange and red visible light and the mid-infrared spectrum. It all started with the near-infrared camera or NERCAM, back in February when the mirror segments weren't aligned, so when they took an image of a star, they got 18 separate images, which they carefully aligned together by stacking them on top of each other and then making more delicate and more refined adjustments in a series called phasing. This effectively combined all 18 mirror segments into a single mirror, resulting in a single star with eight massive diffraction spikes and two smaller horizontal ones. After resolving the NIRCAM issue, the team was able to move on to the Near Infrared Spectrograph, or NIRSPEC, the Fine Guidance Sensor and Near Infrared Slitless Spectrometer, or FGS Nearest, and finally, the Mid Infrared Instrument, or MIRI. Since light travels a slightly different path to reach each instrument, the team needed to align each of the four instruments on board the web. This required tiny movements of each of these detectors to exactly focus the light as it reached each instrument. The images cannot be completely focused with only the primary and secondary mirrors, and tiny modifications inside the detectors are also required. The JWST's research sensors have created a dense field of hundreds of thousands of stars in the sharply focused photos. The JWST's team unanimously agree that the telescope alignment was complete discovering that its optical performance was even better than the most optimistic predictions. Now it's the final stage of preparation. Scientists accurately calibrate and test the four onboard scientific instruments used to interpret the light collected by Webb into images. NASA expects this process to take several months and states that the Webb telescope will be fully functional by the summer. When fully functional, JWST will be able to look back, perhaps 100 million years after the Big Bang. Since its launch on Christmas Day last year, NASA scientists and crew have been working to position the 18 golden mirror segments in place. Webb's mirror assembly was so large that it had to be folded to fit in a rocket before it could be used. In March, NASA shared another image while Webb was still in the tuning process. 18 mirror segments acted as one giant 6.5 meter wide mirror, showing what is possible when capturing light from a single star. Who knows what else the Webb Space Telescope will reveal about our universe by the end of summer. The real result is that photos taken from the internet in the future will look much better. This is really the worst case web, as they are even cleaner and contain more details than we can currently see. Second, these images are monochromatic technical images taken through the single wavelength passband of each device. Since the infrared rays are invisible to the human eye, the final color is always borrowed from the visible spectrum and mapped to infrared rays, making blue one of the shorter infrared wavelengths. According to the internet for these images, Webb indicated a small section, a small satellite galaxy close to the Milky Way, which is known as a large Magellanic Cloud. Cloud creates a dense sea of stars to examine and put Webb's focus on the test images obtained from each detector. First, there's the near-infrared camera NERCAM, which looks at the shortest wavelengths of infrared light closest to visible light and will be used to study the universe's earliest stars and galaxies during their formation as well as young stars in the Milky Way and distant Kuiper Belt objects near Pluto's orbit. Second, there is the Near Infrared Spectrograph NERSPEC, which looks at the same wavelengths of light as a NIRCAM, but instead of being a camera, it is a spectrograph, which means it disperses light and divides it into a spectrum. Analyzing this can reveal the physical properties of objects such as mass, temperature, and chemical composition. Despite the fact that it is a spectrograph and not a camera, it can still take images like these for calibration and alignment purposes but not for any scientific operations. It also has shutters that open and shut to let through different wavelengths of light, and you can see their shadow in this image. Webb will be looking at some incredibly faint objects, such as the very first galaxies to form after a Big Bang. Let's now discuss about the four major scientific instruments used in James Webb Space Telescope. 1. Near-Infrared Camera or NERCAM It is an infrared imager with spectral coverage extending from the edge of the visible to the near-infrared. 
There are 10 4 megapixel sensors. The observatory's wavefront sensor NearCam will also be used for wavefront sensing and control activities, such as aligning and focusing the main mirror segments. Given the amount of time, effort, and money invested in the project, you believe it is critical that everything runs well. But in reality, that section of the web is already fractured. This highly rated equipment has always provided NERCAM with a defective shot as part of the JWST alignment process. There were burned and missing areas all throughout the photograph. What's more impressive is that this was not an accident. NASA scientists were aware that 14% of the lenses were defective, but rather than replacing them and risking damage to other lenses, they sealed off the non-working rows and continued to use the camera. The black streaks visible in the NER spec shot is the outcome of this judgment, which NASA approves. Two, near-infrared spectrograph or NERSPEC will conduct spectroscopy in the same wavelength range. The NERSPEC design has three observation modes, a prism-based low-resolution mode, an R1000 multi-object mode, and an R2700 integral field unit or long-slit spectroscopy mode. The filter wheel assembly selects a corresponding dispersive element, prism or grating, and the grating wheel assembly elects a wavelength pre-selection mechanism. Both mechanisms are based on the Infrared Space Observatory's ISOP HOT wheel mechanics. The multi-object mode uses a clever micro-shutter mechanism to simultaneously observe hundreds of distinct objects anywhere in near specs range of view. There are two 4-megapixel sensors. 3. Mid-Infrared Instrument or MIRI detect wavelengths in the mid to long infrared range of 5 to 27M. It has a mid-infrared camera as well as an imaging spectrometer. MIRI's detector is a thin layer of silicon sensitive to mid-infrared that's sandwiched between a layer of transparent silicon and metallized contacts. The infrared layer and the metal contacts form the pixels in the detector, and they have what's called a high quantum efficiency above 10 microns, which means they can absorb up to 80% of the infrared photons landing on them. Still, that efficiency drops to 27% at 5 microns. Photons generally strike the layer in such a way that they land squarely inside the pixel just above the contact and are absorbed, while others will strike at the borders between the contacts and be absorbed. When you light a laser through a square aperture, you obtain a big cross-shaped pattern. Therefore, the way in MIRI is the consequence of some of the photons diffracting off the square lattice numerous times combined. 4. Fine Guidance Sensor and Near-Infrared Imager and Slitless Spectrograph, or FGS Nearest. It is utilized to keep the observatory's line of sight stable during science observations. FGS measurements are utilized to manage the spacecraft's overall orientation as well as drive the fine steering mirror for image stabilization. Although the NEARIS and the FGS are physically connected, they serve fundamentally separate objectives. One serves as a scientific instrument and the other as part of the observatory's support infrastructure. Now that Webb's mirrors are perfectly aligned, the instrument teams are getting down to business with commissioning, which entails making a series of observations to put each instrument through its paces, including testing all of the detectors with every possible filter and pupil wheel combination. It entails imaging, spectroscopy, coronography, and ensuring that everything functions as planned. It also entails locating all dark current, noise, and artifacts. Finding out how they're all doing now that they're in space and cool to their operating temperatures so far Everything is working as well as or better than the models expected, so this is a really exciting time in Webb's commissioning process. I hope you're as pleased as I am about these brand new photographs. If you have any questions about Webb, please leave them in the comments section below.